Getting diagnosed with cancer is a scary experience, to say the least, but today we have tools for early testing that are saving more lives. Doctors can even predict treatment outcomes like never before. And here to explain is Dr. Francisco Velasquez from PAML. Welcome back, doctor. So Morning. great to have Pleasure you back. To be here. You know, I want to talk to you about so many things, but first I want you to remind our audience about PAML and what you're doing to improve laboratory testing. Sure. So PAML, we're a healthcare solutions company with a focus in diagnostics. So we have all the clinical testing that is uh, available for doctors and patients. But at the same time, we have a lot of consumer guided or consumer oriented options for screening, wellness, and also for disease. So important. What are some of the advanced technologies uh, available today in diagnosing cancer? So when you look at the last 10 years or so, we have made significant advances in molecular, genetic, and genomic testing, which then allows us not only to specifically look at the individual and know which therapies are going to work, but also allows us to look at the individual's disease, mm -hmm. not cancer in general, and know which drugs will actually work better with that tumor. That's so important because really uh, no cancer, all cancers aren't the same and you have to treat people differently, right? Well, uh, genomically we're all slightly different and that actually means that drugs that may work for you may not work for me. Mm. And since cancer is evolved from your own cells, those cells themselves have genetic material. So they actually behave slightly differently. So ne you need to know what the composition is of the individual as well as their disease. And that will tell you with a higher degree of probability which drugs are going to work better, which is a significant advance in cancer therapy. Oh, that is so good to hear and so fascinating. And we want you to stay right here because we're gonna talk more about that and the Balancing Act will be right back. We're back and I'm speaking with Dr. Francisco Velasquez from PAML and Dr. Before the break, we were talking about how cancer treatments have become more personalized and how is this improving the outcome for patients? So let me tell you a little bit of a story to answer that. That's so great. when I started practicing medicine about 30 plus years ago in the Boston area, I was in my mid-20s by the way, just <laughs> disclaimer. All right. <laughs> um, I used to take care of adult leukemia patients. At that point in time, which is not that far back, um, most of those patients died because of disease progression or complications. Fast forward to 2014, and most of those uh, can be treated into remission, perhaps even cured, and if not, treated almost as a chronic condition as opposed to a death sentence, which it was in the late 80s. That's amazing that you've come that far from the 80s till now and that you were able to see that and experience that. And I think that probably lends itself to your doctor knowing you and, and how important it is to have a primary care physician that, that knows you. Well, we go through a lot of things in our life, uh, health and otherwise, and it's always good to have a primary care provider who actually knows your total history, mm coordinates all of your activities and ensures that you're participating in the appropriate screening programs for your age and gender. Because one of the reasons why we have managed to decrease the mortality of cancer is because we also have very good screening programs for some of the key cancer types like you know, breast and prostate, prostate and uh, colon. Well, what are the steps that we can take uh, to try to avoid cancer altogether? Well, I think that single most important thing anybody could do that smokes is quit smoking. Mm. If you think about it, lung cancer is still the number one type of cancer, not only in the U.S., but in the world. Wow. And according to some of the studies, we're going to see the incidence of cancer grow 15 to 70 percent by 2030, mainly because of smoking if you continue doing that. So that's one thing that you can do. Number two, make sure that you participate in the screening programs that are appropriate for you. Cervical cancer screening for women, um, also breast exams and mammographies as indicated, PSA for men, et cetera, et cetera. So there are a number of screening programs that we all need to participate in. 
I think uh, diet is very important. Mm -hmm. There is a strong correlation between diet and types of cancer around the world. So diets that are well balanced um, have a lot of uh, antioxidants, you know, fruits, vegetables, and, uh, full, and whole grains are actually very good for you. And as we all travel in this uh, global economy, you have to be aware of the fact that there's still some environmental uh, concerns in other parts of the world that we should try to avoid, such as asbestos, et cetera. Got it. Doctor, talk to me a little bit about genomic testing and what it is in general. So as a result of the Human Genome Project, well, we have been able to sequence the whole human genome. Now, we know that there are probably two, 3,000 different mutations, although we don't know what all of those mean, but we do know a significant number of them, particularly those associated with probability of cancer. So what that allows us to do is um, two things. First, we can determine if an individual may be at a greater risk, so we can intervene earlier, and mm -hmm. we have seen that with uh, prophylactic uh, mastectomies, for example, for women. Uh, second, as part of the pharmacogenomics application, which is based on your genomic composition, how do you treat this particular individual? We can tailor-made therapies for you. That is the so-called precision medicine or personalized medicine. Right. Oncologists like to call it precision medicine because they've always been very nice to their patients, and I grew up around them so I can vouch for that. And then last but not least, uh, applying tools like next generation sequencing, which allows us to sequence thousands of parts of the genomic profile of a particular tumor, we can find mutations that will tell us, you know, for this particular kind of lung cancer, these are the three drugs that will work best in this combination for this patient, which is something we can provide physicians and patients. That is so amazing to me, the advancements that are being made right here and now before our eyes. Thank you so much for all this valuable information, Doctor. I really appreciate it. Welcome, my pleasure. All right, if you'd like additional information about genomic testing, there's a link at thebalancingact.com. And if you'd like additional information on oncology testing, there's a link at thebalancingact.com, or you can contact your healthcare provider directly.